Alrighty, gentlemen, we will continue to move along here. And uh, Case, I know you got a lot to say about this team and you just want (laughs) to rip into Chad and I. So uh, don't worry, we'll get to that. It is the uh, the Seattle Kraken. So Chad, I know you and I were a lot higher on the Kraken than Case was. We had them at number six in this division. Uh, They are in eighth. And uh, honestly, I mean, you could make the case that they should be in 32nd right now uh, in in the NHL. It has been a tough first season for the 32nd franchise in the NHL, the Seattle Kraken. Case, fire away. Yeah, I, I, so one of the reasons why I wanted to like go back and listen to the episode is because I wanted to hear what we had to say about Seattle because I remember it being the most adamant I've ever been in one of these rankings episodes that I was like, what are you talking about? And uh, yeah, basically I had them in eight and I said they're going to be an absolute dumpster's fire and you guys had them at, I think four or five and I talked about scoring goals. I said this team is all third line players. They're all guys that have been given shots in the past and never really succeeded anyways. So getting an even larger role, it's like I just didn't see it working out for this team because I didn't think they had a great decor and I did not think they're going to be able to score goals. And that's been the case. They're 29th in the league for goals uh, per game, 28th for goals against. And their special teams have been absolutely atrocious because they have a power play full of third line players. There's no overly skilled puck dishers on this team. So it just hasn't worked out yet. Um, you know, they're going to get a sick draft pick out of this. And it's kind of the way um it's the way an expansion team is supposed to go. They're not supposed to be Vegas and be unreal in their first year with guys blowing up. It, this is how it's supposed to go. And I think the league is maybe a little, you know, behind closed doors, very happy that it's turning out this way. But um, yeah, like like I said, it's goals. They, they can't score goals and they're getting scored on a lot. Yeah, I think the second point is is more prominent in my mind. They're getting scored on a lot. And that was the whole kind of reason why I thought Seattle was going to be, you know, not a not a good playoff team, but sort of on the bubble, like anywhere between four, five, six. You know, I thought they'd be competitive in a shitty division, but that has not been the case. And, and the problem is uh, on top of not being able to score a lot of goals, because I recognize that is a thing. And, you know, I. I realized at the start that, you know, I said they're going to score by committee and that hasn't really happened. I think they've got three guys right now who are on pace to score between 50 and 60 points, which like, you know, that's not nothing that they do have, like, I would say a second line, a good second line for, you know, those three guys. But other than that, like it's been atrocious. And the reason that I was a bit higher on them was their goaltending. Like I thought they win a ton of games 2-1, you know, 3-2 type thing because they had two guys last year who were amongst the top in goal saved above expected in the entire NHL. And then this year, both of those guys are towards the very, very bottom of that list. So it's like, it's such a random occurrence that like their goaltending was so good last season. And by their goaltending, I mean these guys on different teams but that goal saved above expected does account for you know scoring chances and opportunities and quality of opportunities as well but now they've just been total dog shit this year and that's something that i didn't see coming and and i so i just want to say that was the main reason why seattle like i was i guess high on them like four five six like a bubble team a bit higher than casey for sure but so i want to defend my point there um, but I do agree, Case. Like, the scoring point, like, I'll, I'll admit, like, that's, you know, it hasn't happened this year. They haven't scored by committee. They've barely scored at all. Yeah, and kind of the argument that I like the most that I made, it was it was near the end because I just kept wanting to come back to Seattle and tell you guys that they're going to be last in this division. <laughs> and it was, it was talking about Vegas and how it's a bunch of guys that were never given a shot. There's some skilled players that were never given a shot. Here's your chance. Go for it. But then there's guys on on Seattle that they've had their chance at, and Yarncroft and Eberle and uh, Wenberg and all of them, really. Yeah. They all were given a shot on other teams, didn't really work out, and then they got picked up in Seattle for a second shot. And it still hasn't really worked out. It's a, it's a team full of third liners, and they're scoring like a team f- full of third liners. I would have expected them to play a little more defense 
yeah. like a team full of third liners because that's usually your shutdown line and I mean it's just not really working out um I know, like, I was pretty high on the goaltending tandem as well. I did almost spit my coffee out when you you said that it was the best one in the league. Um, I was one like, of one I of. I was like, maybe not. You said best in the league, and I was like, they're good, but not that good. Well, and then we hold were on. both just completely wrong. That we the were tandem has just been god awful. We were, but listen to this. Last season, in terms of goal saved above expected, which is I think the best measure for goaltending in the NHL right now. Philip Grubauer ranked 11th in the entire NHL. Chris Drieger ranked 14th. So there's two things about goalie stats. One of them is, regardless of how many metrics it is to, to try to point out above expected, they're still a product of the teams they play on, like in the system that's in front of them. Um, and then the other thing is it's the most sporadic position in any sport. You cannot predict who's going to be a good goalie every single year because you never know what's going to happen. Like uh, there's some just weird anomalies happening in the season right now. Like Bobrovsky, like he was not good the last three years and he's seeing more danger than most teams and his team is uh, winning games at will, not only because they're scoring a lot of goals, but because he's playing so well too. So it's like, Goaltending is just something you can never put that much weight on when you're looking yes. at these teams. And I've learned my lesson now from Seattle, but I think the general problem with goalie stats is just sample size because like goalies just play fewer games and mm-hmm. you have fewer opportunities to measure what a player is capable of doing on a consistent basis. So to me like sample size is the main problem and that's why maybe we sh- I shouldn't have put so much stock into this goaltending you know tandem which I still think like if we're talking last year I think that is the best tandem going into this season if we're looking at stats alone but it's sample size so and different team I mean yeah it's I'm, I hear you like I hear you when it comes to the advanced analytics of goaltendings but like it's a different team like it's just totally just yeah drastically different yeah. you can take a high goal scorer and put them on different teams and it's not going to affect them nearly as much as putting a goaltender on a, a shitty team when they're used to playing for the top two teams in the league definitely which is why you use the contextual stats rather than just like straight up goals against average and save percentage because we know at this point like even the casual fan kind of knows that those don't work and that's why you use the above and below expected stats which does account for the amount of high danger medium danger low danger shots that you see in a typical game and then bases you know whether you're saving more or less than what an average goalie would and so or or sorry what an average goalie is expected to and so that's it's like you know we shouldn't get into the whole advanced stats conversation but the point is i was too high on the goaltending because i relied on the stats when goaltending small sample size and it's mostly voodoo and we've seen that with like basically every goalie in the league this year even the two who play for the maple leafs who i'm watching right now so (laughs) I, I was with you on the goaltending. I thought uh, Grubauer and Drieger, that's a good tandem. But uh, you mentioned sample size, and it was a small sample size for Chris Drieger last year on a very good team in the Florida Panthers. And he was excellent, but that was kind of the question, you know, would he would he be as good uh, on that bridge deal that Seattle signed him to? And it's been a rough first year, and it's been a rough uh, first year for Grubauer as well, who's on a long-term contract. So uh, things will get better, and uh, they will be able to put a better product on the ice in front of those two. But uh, yeah, for, for this year, it's it's been a rough go for Seattle. And uh, Chad, you and I were maybe a little higher on them than we should have been. So... Uh, uh, I'm gonna go back to my. Out. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my point that I made in the previous episode. I think you guys were just too scared. You know, you were worried about them being good. Oh. <laughs> I, I heard that, and you know who said that to me, Case? Uh, John. He was like, because I told him of the rankings when they happen, and he was like, you know, you might be a little scared. And I was like, dude, like, that's not the case. Like, I believe in their goaltending. I believe in their depth, even though they don't have the top end scoring. But anyways, we've seen this year that it's blown up. But I, I'm still of the opinion that 
if they had average goaltending, league average goaltending, like I said about Pittsburgh last year in the playoffs when Jari was playing absolutely terrible and, and now he's one of the best in the league. I said the same thing. It's like if, if a team gets league average goaltending, if they have the depth, they'll be fine. And clearly those two teams are structured completely differently. But I believed in, in Seattle and I just don't think, you know, we can r- truly say how good they would be if if they had league average goaltending it's tough but you know well they probably would still be scoring the 29th least amount of goals in the uh league yeah and maybe that's the case but maybe they let in you know the third or fourth fewest goals in the nhl if that's you know if the goaltending is true